your help before it's too late for the polar bear. Using the latest science, World Wildlife Fund works to save amazing wildlife like the polar bear. But we can't do it without you. For just $5 a month, you can join WWF and help save the polar bear and other threatened species and their habitats. To join now, go online to helpwwf.org or call 1-800-341-3412 and receive these free reusable bags. Polar bears are losing ground day by day. Please go online or call now to help save them. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, so what else is new? Well, I just changed my Medicare plan. Oh, open enrollment. Yep, I compared plans and found better coverage for me. Of course, you notice the new benefits we get under the new health care law. What? Well, like 50% off brand name prescription drugs for people who are in the donut hall. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, you have to keep up. Oh, come on. Keep up. It's open enrollment. Time to compare and review plans at Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. We now offer phone service for $1.70 a month with Magic Jack. That's just $19.95 a year. $19.95 a year. We give you free local and long distance and your own phone number. Make us your new phone company or add a second line with Magic Jack. Hi. I'm looking to save an insurance. You don't want to deal with a lot of flibberty flab or mumbo jumbo. Sounds like you need to name your price. No gobbledygook. Never. Do I still get all the dag nugget coverage I need? Sure. We give you a quote and you can adjust your price up and down to find something that works for you. This thing is okey mcsmokey skittly doo. Great! I think? Biggity. Oh! Still not sure. The Name Your Price tool. Only from Progressive. Call or click today. We now offer phone service for $1.70 a month with Magic Jack. That's just $19.95 a year. $19.95 a year. We give you free local and long distance and your own phone number. Make us your new phone company or add a second line with Magic Jack. The Rachel Maddow Show, next only on MSNBC. The New York City Fox affiliate reported last night that this week's snowstorm was the city's fifth heaviest snowfall based on inches of snow recorded in Central Park. Only one of the top five back in 1947 was not from the past 15 years. January 1996, fourth heaviest. February of this year, third heaviest. February of 2006, heaviest on record. And in our number one story tonight, you know what time it is when winter's first snowfall comes along. It's time for the right-wing global warming deniers to get their chuckle on. The Fox gang reacting to the storm, claiming right on cue that cold weather pours hot water on global warming. Our next guest will explain why snowfalls can actually get worse during global warming. But first, we wanted to explain the technical meteorological reasons that storms like this fuel global warming denial. For that report, let's go to our countdown meteorologist, Sam Cedar. Sam? Thanks, Sam. Now, this is Sunday's storm right over the Northeast, dropping more than two feet of snow in some regions. But then we got a high pressure system coming in from the energy producing states, specifically lobbying pressure that emanates from companies that stand to lose money if we actually go green. This effect is known as the Koch brothers, sometimes referred to as Los Hermanos. Now, combine that with a strong front of ignorance sweeping up from down south. And keep in mind, on their best day, you're looking at 60-65% stupidity levels down there. And that gives you a strong chance of thunder and prevarication. And it just sits right on top here and hangs there. And of course, you get that current of blustery hot air out of just one radio studio in Palm Beach, Florida. And that gust actually controls an entire stream of Republican lawmakers leading all the way up to Washington, D.C. and creating an entire system spinning counterfactwise. Keep in mind, with the chilling factor on the mainstream media, it's going to feel several degrees stupider than it already is. So please, folks, bundle up. Back to you, Sam. Countdown meteorologist Sam Cedar, thanks for that report, Sam. As promised, here to explain why global warming equals bigger snowstorms, conservation biologist Reese Halter, uh, the author of Wild Weather, The Truth About Global Warming. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening, Sam. So uh, let's start with the obvious. 
Global warming's real, it's happening. So why have we seen two of New York's biggest snowfalls ever this year? Well, imagine going into your kitchen, walking up to your refrigerator, opening up the freezer, leaving the door open. The motor would ramp up, get warm, as the Arctic has, and the cold air would continue to spill out, eventually cooling our kitchen. That's what's happening. Couple that with a high-pressure system in the mid-latitudes, pulling that icy cold polar air all the way down to Miami, mix it with the uh, precipitation from the Atlantic, and voila, we We've got our storms in NYC. So uh, does that mean that some of the areas of the Earth are going to become colder forever? Or does this all even out over time? Or help me out here. What happens? Well, you know, as the, the, the deal is we're missing an incredible amount of ice in the Arctic, for instance, and also the Antarctic. But let's stick with the Arctic because that's closer to home here. 770,000 square miles this September we're missing. That's 100,000 square miles bigger than Sarah Palin's Alaska. All right. <laughs> also, the ocean is warming up two degrees. The Arctic Ocean is two degrees warmer. In biology, that's huge. Our friends, the iconic spiraled narwhals, have told us that. So the, instead of that air being bottled up, the jet stream usually moves west to east. It is now spilling and pouring out. And look what's happened in the UK. They've had the coldest December ever. So NASA expects 2010 to be the hottest year on record. Now, so if that means like a, a few days off from work for some big blizzards, if it means maybe we get a couple more days of sun, uh, New York, uh, what difference does it make? Oh, look, it's huge. Our oceans, let, let's look at the oceans. 40% of the phytoplankton, the base of the food chain, is missing. That phytoplankton pulls at least a quarter of the rising CO2 out of the atmosphere. Let's look on land. In the, in the Amazon, in 205, we had a one in 100 year drought. 500 million trees were blown over in a wicked storm. And 2010, five years later, we've got another 100 year drought event. If we look Look in America, our four, the fourth largest forest cover on Earth, uh, in Arizona, in Idaho, in Wyoming, in Colorado, our forests, instead of being sinks, that is pulling the CO2 out, our sources, billions of trees are dead from bark beetles. We got problems, Sam. Oy, well, uh, that doesn't look too, uh, doesn't sound too inviting. Um, I appreciate your time here. Conservation biologist, Dr. Reese Halter, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Very scary. Thank you. That's December 28th. I'm Sam Cedar in for Keith Olbermann. You can hear more from me daily, Monday through Friday, on the Majority Report at Majority.fm. The Rachel Maddow Show is next. Good evening, and thanks for staying with us for the next hour. I am the person you are seeing on your TV machine right now because I am the person who is on camera mostly on this show. Uh, but the truth is that there is a whole world of people who work on this show to produce it and make it possible. And if that world of great people were, say, a pyramid-shaped casino in Las Vegas, the shining beacon of light, which can be seen from space, the thing at the top, the pinnacle of our accomplishments as a staff in 2010, including everything we did for every second of airtime we produced in this entire year, the single best thing we did this entire year was this. And now a quick check of our viewer mailbag. Uh, viewer Wyatt writes, Dear Rachel, you don't ever seem to use the highlighter that's always visible on your desk during the show. Is it just a prop? No, the highlighter is not a prop. I keep the highlighter here because if you put two highlighters together, it makes a lightsaber. It's not a prop. It's my lightsaber. <laughs> Thanks for writing, Wyatt. We did nothing else this year that was as 